This is a TF Source video review of Fans Project Warbot Defender. TFSource.com tends to focus on a lot of Transformers related figures that you cannot find in the US stores, and as such, many of the recently available third party toys have been made available on TFSource.com. Fans Project is quickly becoming one of the most well-respected third-party Transformers-related toy manufacturers out there after their incredibly successful City Commander armor kits and their Superion upgrade kits. For the first time, Fans Project has created their very own standalone figure which does not require a mainstream toy for assembly. Named Warbot Defender, this figure is an homage to Generation 1 Springer, first seen in the Transformers animated movie. It features die-cast metal parts as well as three completely separate modes. So has Fans Project struck gold for the third time? Follow me as we watch this toy spring into action. Warbot Defender, like all items shipped from TF Source, comes expertly wrapped in cellophane for added protection to ease the mint and sealed box collector in all of us. Fans Project has really done an incredible job of packaging this figure with four different layers of protection. There is an all-encompassing clear plastic sleeve, then a four-color cardstock sheath then a cardboard tray which houses the final plastic bubble containing the toy itself. Included in the tray is the full color comic book with instructions, the sword, both handguns, and an attachment for aerial display stands. The comic book tells the story of Warbot Defender's evil clone attacking his base, which could mean that we may see an evil version of this figure in our future. Only time will tell if we end up seeing a WB002 or more. The full color booklet includes instructions in photographic form and is over 16 pages long. Warbot Defender comes snugly packaged in robot mode. The first thing that is noticeable is how many points of articulation this toy actually has. There are five joints in each individual arm and they can rotate 360 degrees at the shoulder. The knees have what appear to be double jointed articulation due to their need to fold a complete 180 degrees during transformation. The figure brandishes a variety of joints, some incredibly strong and ratcheted, while others are simple ball joints. The strong ratchets at the hips and thighs help to hold some incredible poses. The one major flaw of this figure is its top-heavy demeanor, which causes simple standing poses to repeatedly topple over. The feet are just a little bit too small and could benefit from a little more plastic from the base of the feet. However, the last thing that you want to do with your defender is to pose him standing still. This figure can reach some amazing poses, and it is probably the first transforming figure that is able to realistically holster and unholster its weapon all by itself. All three weapon accessories are easily stored in robot mode when not being brandished by the bot. The guns are very sturdy, but be wary of the sword, which has been molded so thin that it is indeed in danger of snapping at any second. One of the great draws of Warbot Defender is its excellent execution of two distinct alt modes. Most triple changers admittedly suffer in at least one or two of their advertised three modes, but Fans Project seems to have discovered the proper recipe. At first, this bot turns into some sort of futuristic armored car mode, quite similar to the BotCon 2007 iteration of Springer. This tank is well armed and very sturdy. The design gives the impression that it could have been seen in the recent Avatar films. The six-wheeled vehicle rolls very nicely on a flat surface. Once again, the sword and guns may be stored on the vehicle, but it is not advised to store the delicate sword piece under the vehicle for fear of breakage. The bright yellow hood and the bright blue windshield help to remind us all that Springer is back. After reaching armored car mode, the helicopter mode comes next. This transformation is far more complex than one might assume from looking at the still photos. There is quite a bit of reorganization of the parts within the car that help to create a very unique and definitively Springer helicopter mold. The sword accessory finally reaches its full potential as the freely spinning rotor blades of the copter and the die cast leg housings become the tail of the stealthy heli. The handguns fit into nicely angled peg holes that have been until now hidden from sight. The display stand adapter may be connected to the underside of the helicopter and attached to a separately available display stand for maximum display value. If anything shouts classic Springer, it is this beautifully executed helicopter mold. Warbot Defender is meant to fill the gap for a classic style Springer triple changer mold. He is somewhere between a typical deluxe and Voyager class figure. 
When seen next to other Season 3 characters from Classics or Generation 1, he seems to defy genre styles and fits in with either. We have already seen two iterations of Springer in the Classics universe, but each one was tailored to only one of the character's two alt modes. If you've been craving a true triple-changing Springer toy, this is the closest you are probably going to get. Warbot Defender is incredibly well designed. As Fan Project's name implies, each of its creations are aimed directly at the wants and desires of longtime Transformers fans. The ability for this figure to creatively stow and utilize his weapons in all modes should definitely be tugging at the heartstrings of the original G1 collector. Although Warbot Defender has a bit of difficulty staying standing, most will find either of the alt modes to be the most successful display options for this piece. This is something that we expect Fans Project to address in any future creations. With the announced Bruticus upgrade kit, Fans Project will continue to lead the way in third-party boutique Transformer items. If you can afford to spend BotCon exclusive prices on a boutique third-party item, you will not be disappointed. Only time will tell if we will be able to see a Protector upgrade kit in our future, or if paying over $50 for that Classics Rodimus was just simply a waste of time.